Hi, I'm Malcolm Torres, host of the Sea Stories and Science Fiction YouTube channel and podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about a classic old book of sea stories called Ocean Adventures. This book was published in the 1850s by a guy named John Sleeper. He was a writer for the Boston newspaper, and these stories had been published in the newspaper over the course of many years, and he collected them and put them into this book. Mr. Sleeper was a sailor in his earlier years, like a merchant sailor aboard wooden sailing ships, and had been down to the Brazils and over to Europe and around to Batavia and the Far East multiple times. So he was a real salty old guy, and he wrote these stories and put them in the newspaper, and then he collected them into this book. I found this book in a bookstore in the Hamptons on Long Island, New York, many years ago, and I've liked it. I've enjoyed it uh, greatly. It's just full of cl classic, classic stories. If you like these kinds of stories, I strongly recommend this. So there's really just a few things that I would tell you about this. And first off, I want to mention that that there are there are 35 stories in this book, and every one of them are on my podcast. It's called the Sea Stories and Science Fiction Podcast. There's 35 episodes there, and every one of these stories is read there, and you can listen to them for free. So go and check that out if you want to listen to these while you're driving or out for a hike or on a treadmill or just laying around. It's a great podcast, and 35 episodes, every story in this book is on there now. These stories all take place aboard wooden sailing ships and between the late 1700s and the mid 1800s, which is really the age of sail. Uh, to give you some context, uh, Moby Dick was published in the 1850s, around the same time that this was published. So readers in those days, these were the tales. Like today we like, you know, Star Wars and, and other blockbuster movies. Back then it was sea stories. So these stories cover all the classic salty sea story elements, such as shipwrecks, pirates, mermaids, uh, practical jokes, uh, adventures in foreign ports, uh, really bad storms where the masts are blown down and how does the crew survive or how did they get into port or uh, there's stories with shark attacks, uh, being lost at sea. So one story is about dogs and the sailors are in the forecastle and there's a storm raging outside. And the way it goes is the, fir the first sailor tells a story about a dog that he knew on a ship that he served on. And then another sailor tells another story about a dog they knew aboard a ship that they were on. And, and it's fun because as the storm is getting more intense outside, the stories they're telling are becoming more and more outrageous and exaggerated. So you've got these dogs that are, you know, one dog knows how to navigate and another dog rescues people when they fall over the side. And another dog is, uh, can climb up the mast and, and tie knots. So it's just, you know, the stories are, they're tall tales. I mean, they're yarns. and if you like that kind of thing. There's another really nice thing about this book and that's the artwork in the book. And I wanna show you a few examples here. So this is from the story Ululu, the mermaid of the riding rocks. And the sailor telling this tells the story of how he met a mermaid and went below the ocean and lived with her there for a while and how he married her and you know what happened in his life when he was married to this mermaid. So here's another picture. It looks like a bull standing up, barging in on a group of ladies who are all scared to death. This is called Rufus Armstrong and Practical Jokes. And this story is about Rufus Armstrong. And if, if you know anything about sailors, they just love practical jokes. And there's always one sailor who is kind of pulling these pranks on everyone. So Rufus Armstrong is a practical joker. So he tells a story of, of his uh, pranks and practical jokes that he pulls on people. And of course, as he goes through the story, the pranks that he's pulling get, get increasingly more and more outrageous. And here's another story called 
Walter Gaston. And he, Walter was impressed. In other words, his ship got in a wreck and then he was rescued by a British uh, Navy ship. So here he is, an American sailor on a merchant ship that's wrecked, and he, they, he gets rescued by a British Navy ship. And of course, they take him and they basically force him into service in the British Navy for over 20 years. So the story is being told by Walter, who uh, is back in his hometown of New Hampshire. He's broken down. He's a wretch of a man because he spent 20 years basically enslaved as uh, forced into service as a seaman aboard a British Navy ship. So every story has a nice drawing, like I've showed you a few. And if you want to see all of them, you can go to my blog. There's a link in the show notes. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you can see I have all these posted in my feed there. The last thing I want to do is just give you a little flavor for the writing in, this, in these stories. I just want to read a quick little piece here. So this is from a story called Mutiny Aboard the Allspice Privateer. And this is, I've read many, many sea stories and novels, and I will tell you that this story is one of the most vividly and violent stories that I've ever read because there's drunkenness, mutiny, and a massive explosion aboard a ship at sea. And these sailors are these salty old tars, and they, this is just some rough stuff going on here. I just want to read this to you. So the mutiny is in progress. And there's a division amongst the senior officers on the crew, and they've basically handcuffed the captain and told him this is how it's going to be. And the captain is raising hell, and for some reason they take the handcuffs off of him, and the captain like goes ballistic. So, so here's uh, here's the captain. He's just raging. Uh, I never shall forget the wild glare of his eyes, the dark scowl and grin which his bloody feature exhibited. When tossing his cutlass into the sea, he seized a boarding pistol, which was at hand, and shouted at the top of his voice, I'll be revenged on you, you rascals. Dearly shall you pay for your mutinous conduct. He rushed down into the cabin. Follow him, sung out Mr. Wallace, our second lieutenant, for Hardcastle lay on the deck, groaning and writhing in pain. He'll do some mischief. Take away his pistols and put him in irons till he recovers his senses. Never burst forth from an unearthly yell below. You shall never put me in irons again. Villains, scoundrels, prepare to meet your doom, which is death, death, death. Fear seemed for an instant to palsy the minds of all on board. At these appalling words, we felt that something dreadful was going to happen. So then the situation proceeds to get worse. Seize him, knock him down, shoot him, exclaimed half a dozen voices. And down in the cabin rushed a body of men armed with cutlasses and pistols for the purpose of cutting or shooting down Captain Thunderbolt. But he had got the best of them. I was standing on the larboard bulwarks at the time, with my hand on the main swifter, wondering what would happen next, when I heard a clash of arms below, the next moment, the stifled report of a pistol met my ears. It was quickly followed by a sound as loud and deafening as if the archangel had blown the last trumpet to summon the living and the dead to judgment. The furious manic had set fire to the powder magazine and the privateer was blown to atoms. I was stunned by the hard explosion, but only for a moment. When I came to my senses, I found myself in the water. Self-preservation bade me to seize a plank, which I found floating nearby. And then I looked round at the horrors of the scene. These I shall not attempt to describe indeed. I could not if I would for it is impossible for any language to convey a correct idea of the destruction which was at work that moment, even now to think of it unmans me. So, I mean, this is super vivid. I mean, this is real. This is, this is probably the most real, hardcore, salty sea stories that I've ever read. And there's 
you know, 400 pages of them, 30 stories, and they're all here in this book, and every one of them is on the podcast. So now here, here's another little paragraph from a story called Ululu. Ululu is a mermaid, and uh, this sailor sees these mermaids on the rocks, and they can't believe that what they're seeing, and they decide to get their be calmed on the sea, and they're they're looking at these mermaids over there, and they're like, are those seals or what are they? So they get in a small boat and they paddle over there. And when they get closer, they realize these are mermaids. And some of the sailors want to go back. But the one sailor says, no, 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 just drop me on the rock. So they drop him off and he walks over and he meets the mermaid. And obviously he falls in love with her. And then he goes below the ocean with her and he marries her and he lives with her. And this is like right when he first goes underwater. By this time, Jack was nearly out of breath and some minutes elapsed before he could recover himself sufficiently to look around him. When he did, he found that the lady had kept faith with him. She was in a beautiful palace, or rather grotto, surrounded by splendors of a character superior to what the mind of man can conceive. The grotto was of coral, of the most beautiful description, and of various hues, and it was thickly studded with precious stones, which quietly reflected the soft light that penetrated through the vast waters of ocean. From the roof hung, in countless numbers, clusters of delicate marine animal of the simplest structure, and in front of the grotto was an extensive marine forest where trees and plants of the most fantastic character abounded, and through which were numerous paths paved with pearls and various colored shells. Following a rich mosaic, intersecting each other at right angles. Some of them led to a garden laid out with much taste, which yielded fruits and flowers in great profuseness, and of a flavor and beauty far superior to anything which Jack ever met with above the water. But what surprised him most was to see animals wonderfully resembling men and women in every respect, clad in modest and becoming garments, promenading through the walks, admiring the productions of the gardens, dancing in the grottos or reclining in the arbors, which were seen at the termination of every path. So, I mean, this is fantastic. Every story gets into this sort of outrageous realm. And you kind of think back like, wow, the 1850s, you know, this is like special effects. You know, this is what uh, was considered outrageous and fun back then. And here's just one last example. This is from a story, How to Raise a Breeze. And what's happened here is the ship is becalmed on the ocean and they're going on several days of being becalmed and the uh, crew is becoming very um, kind of crazy at this point because the ship is kind of moving, but it's not going anywhere. It's kind of wallowing in the trough and kind of bouncing around. And if you've ever been on a ship becalmed on the ocean, it can drive you nuts. And that's what's happened here. One guy has taken another guy's hat and threw it off the boat <laughs> just to bother him. And so the guy dives in the water and swims out to get his hat and he's swimming back and there's a shark coming at him. And right as he gets to the side of the ship, the shark is about to bite him. <laughs> so uh, the, the all hands are gathered on the side of the ship and they're yelling at him to come back and they're watching out for the shark. And other guys are trying to untie the boat and throw the boat in the water. So it's a pretty chaotic moment, and this is what happens. Uh, all was now confusion on the deck. Some hastened to lower the boat, and some sought for the harpoon, the grains, and the boat hook, with a view to do battle with the voracious monster, and create at least a diversion under cover of which their shipmate might escape the fate which seemed impending up over him. But the boat was thoroughly lashed and could not be lowered in a hurry. The death-dealing instruments could not be found immediately, and the shark, with his evil eye glistening with the anticipation of a luxurious feast, was meanwhile creeping along rather closely towards Jerry, who, frightened almost to death, was making superhuman efforts to get on board. He had reached the side of the ship and clutched the bite of the main top bowline, which was thrown toward him when the ferocious monster fearing he was about to lose his prey, suddenly turned over on his side, preparatory for making a grab at the thigh of the well-fed Yankee sailor, 
So here he is, the shark's about to bite this guy and they're trying to get a rope to him. And, and those of the crew who were looking over the side simultaneously uttered a fearful shriek for the boat was at that moment only rounding the quarter of the ship and the captain had not yet got ready the harpoon. They gave up their unhappy shipmate for lost when Jack Thompson, who had been foremost among the most active in rendering assistance, leaped up to the gunwale and with a stunning voice called out, watch there, watch, jumped with his force directly upon the back of the shark. The feat was a desperate one, but it was admirably executed. The feet of the chivalrous sailor struck the man-eating villain fairly just abaft the shoulders, slipped aside, although in different directions, and for a moment only, Jack Thompson was seen riding a cheval on the back of the sea monster with his naughty features lighted up with a smile as if he thought it was the funniest thing in the world. So <laughs> here's the ship becalmed on the ocean and the guys are getting at each other and they're really bugging each other. And one guy throws another guy's hat over the side and he jumps in, he goes swims to get it. He's coming back, a shark is coming to get him. They're trying to launch the boat. They're trying to get the harpoon. They're trying to pull him up with a rope. The shark is literally turned sideways to bite the guy. And right then, the guy who threw his hat over the side says, and jumps onto the shark with both feet, smashes into the shark. Now he's got both legs over the shark like he's riding a horse. And he scares the shark away so that the guy doesn't get eaten. <laughs> so, I mean, this is just like little small examples. There's, like I said, 35 stories in this book with great artwork. And every one of these stories is on the podcast. So I would ask you to uh, check out the podcast where you can listen to all these stories. And then also this book has actually been reprinted and reissued. So if you look around on Amazon or um, uh, thrift books and other sites, you'll, you'll find it. It's called Ocean Adventures by J.S. Sleeper. Great book. So to wrap up, three things. These stories are really salty. Mermaids, pirates, shark attacks, shipwrecks, sea dogs, mutiny. It's all here. Great stories. All from the 1700s to the 1800s. Second thing is great artwork in the book. Check me out on the social media channels and you can see all this beautiful artwork that's in here. And then, as I mentioned, I just read a few examples. So that should motivate you to listen to the podcast or to get yourself a copy. So thanks for joining me. I'm Malcolm Torres. This is the Sea Stories and Science Fiction YouTube channel. You can also check out my Sea Stories and Science Fiction podcast and friend me and follow me. And uh, let's get together on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm on Goodreads and I'm on LinkedIn too. So thanks for joining me.